Howdy folks, Jambariki here. The Plague Dogs. I'm going to be honest and admit that I've not been looking forward to this one. In fact, I've put it off many times in my schedule. I was going to review it straight after Watership Down, but I couldn't gather the courage to do so. This isn't because it's known for being a really bad movie, it's because it contains cruelty to dogs. Now, I have seen real and genuine animal cruelty in such movies as Pink Flamingos and Cannibal Holocaust, but this film contains cruelty to dogs. So I knew it was going to be harder to stomach because I have a strong and emotional connection to dogs. I've owned many dogs myself, and one of those dogs, a few years ago, was diagnosed with cancer. Watching her suffer and dying was heartbreaking. Saying goodbye to her was even more difficult. So I hope you can understand why I found this one to be off-putting. But I can't glance over it. It's renowned for being a great British animated feature. Me skipping over the Plague Dogs is like a horror viewer skipping over The Shining or The Exorcist. It has to be done. The Plague Dogs is a British animated adventure drama from the team behind Watership Down. It follows Snitter and Rolf, a pair of dogs who live in a laboratory where they are experimented on by scientists. One day, they manage to escape and attempt to live in the wild with help from a shifty fox called Todd. When rumours spread that these dogs may carry the bubonic plague and possibly kill two humans, the army jump into action and attempt to take down the poor creatures. Now, there are a few different cuts of this movie, but I've only seen one. When the DVD menu popped up, I was given two choices. Plague Dogs or Plague Dogs Original Cut. I chose Plague Dogs. I don't know the name for the cut I watched, but that was the option I clicked. While I don't think that this movie is as sad or depressing as people have made it out to be, I still think it's definitely a good animated adventure. It's got its flaws, but it's also got some good things too. I believe that this film's biggest strength is its ability to create tension. While watching this movie, I was kept on the edge of my seat constantly and always felt intrigued or excited. These characters are innocent and very naive, so watching them being pushed into dangerous hazards always kept me in a tense state. I kept shouting at the screen in a bid to warn these sweet dogs about the troubles ahead of them. Turn around! Don't go there! Nobody's gonna shoot you! You know a movie is gripping when it makes you want to save the on-screen characters. It's the same feeling that I got when I saw the animated war drama When the Wind Blows. Now, like I said, I don't think that this movie is as miserable or tear-jerking as many people have claimed it to be. Sure, it has a bleak tone plus some very distressing moments, but it never made me cry and it didn't leave behind a haunting feeling. This isn't a bad thing, don't get me wrong, it's just an observation of how I felt. It still achieves lots of thrills, action and drama, it just didn't make me as upset as many other viewers have been before. What about this movie's depiction of humans? Well, much like Watership Down, human beings in this movie are depicted as regular folk, rather than as over-the-top cartoon villains like you see in a lot of other wildlife animations. They're mainly farmers and scientists who put their careers before the safety of animals. Yes, this is cruel, but these humans talk and act like everyday folk or professional working people, and not like some goofy bad guys from Captain Planet. This makes the humans more identifiable and recognisable. The film does also have humans that defend animals or sympathise with them, so it's not saying that all humans don't care about animals. In some scenes, humans are shown from shoulders or waist down. This works when a dog is in the scene because it reflects an animal's point of view. However, most of the time we barely get to see the humans when they're talking. For a majority of the film, we hear humans having conversations about the dogs while the movie shows Rolf and Snitter travelling across fields and rivers. I did not like this choice of visual storytelling. It made it hard to understand who was talking at the time, because we couldn't see who was talking. Sometimes I mistook a conversation between some farmers or scientists as a conversation between the dogs. Choosing not to show the humans talking wastes the visual medium that the story is being told through. 
I mean, this film is using the power of animation and should have embraced it when the humans were talking. Why ignore opportunities to be creative when you're working with such an imaginative tool? Have fun with it. Be abstract with it. Use it for crying out loud. Snitter is optimistic, strong-hearted and jolly. What makes him interesting is that his brain has been experimented on, so he often has warped illusions or trippy dreams. This makes for some surreal sequences and gives some strange spark to Snitter's personality. It makes him a little kooky and quirky. He is also suffering from the guilt of feeling responsible for the deaths of two humans, which is quite sad really because he technically wasn't in the wrong. This made me sympathise with him because he doesn't deserve to feel guilty as he's so innocent and sweet. Ralph is mature, stern and serious natured. Despite being very opposite, he has a strong friendship with Snitter that's heartfelt and sincere. While he may not be as wacky or fun as Snitter, I still really liked him because he's so humble, caring and gentle. His biggest strength is his instinctive ability to stay cautious, which helps him be sensible and open-eyed about whatever the dogs confront. The poor creature had to suffer from dangerous experiments at the lab, so he has a consistent fear of water, which makes him nervous about crossing rivers. I think that there's something noble about Ralph. He overcomes his fear to travel lands, he looks out for Snitter's safety, and he uses intuitive vigilance to keep safe. He's pretty cool if you ask me. Todd the Fox is sly and mysterious, but incredibly helpful for the dog's survival because he's so experienced in the wild. What makes him fascinating is his shady and strange presence. It's hard to interpret whether he actually cares about the dogs. He can be very selfish, but he does help the dogs to live a primitive lifestyle outdoors. We do eventually find out how he feels about the dogs, but until we do, he remains to be a cryptic character that's interesting to work out. The animation for this movie has a very refined fluidity and a smooth, graceful movement. It's a great effort and a big step up from the animation for Watership Down, but the faces are restrained, which has made the characters seem less flexible or alive than they could have been. Sure, the characters' mouth movements are in sync with the dialogue, but their faces are often expressionless or static. This makes it hard to read characters' emotions, something we need to do in order to connect with them. I would forgive this flaw if the characters' emotions could be read through their body movements, but they can't be. Their bodies move like regular animals and don't have enough charm or charisma to channel their personalities or feelings. So yeah, the animation is pretty and full of grace, but it's not expressive enough to support the characters' spirits. Snitter is voiced by the wonderfully talented John Hurt. My first worry when I found out that Hurt was in this was that he would just sound like Hazel from Watership Down, but thankfully, he tries something fresh. Only a few voice actors can convincingly transform into different characters without changing their entire speech pattern or natural voice. Hurt is certainly one of those rare vocal performers that can do this. Everything bad comes out of my head, don't you see? Perhaps dying, even dying doesn't stop it. Christopher Benjamin plays Ralph, and he does a damn good job. He makes his character sound exhausted and bitter. This voice is very suitable for a dog who has been humiliated and abused because it sounds hopeless and beaten. However, his voice doesn't make him sound unlikable or annoyingly miserable. On the contrary, it's also given an air of humble modesty that's full of nobility, which adds charm to his character. Might as well lie here as anywhere. Where are we going anyway? I've got to stop, Snitter. My leg hurts. James Bolam voices Todd. He provides this sly fox with a creepy Geordie accent that makes him sound shady, eerie, and convincingly mysterious. He reads every line with a cheeky and sneaky delivery. Now give over. Let's all be mates. No need for a Barney. 
Stick with me and we'll all be champion. The music for this film was composed by Patrick Gleason, who served as a master synthesizer for the score of Apocalypse Now. Gleason's score for Plague Dogs is very terrifying in two ways. For disturbing scenes set in a laboratory, his music achieves sickening sounds that reflect the on-screen animal cruelty. Then, for the rest of the film, an ominous ambiance plays against the soundtrack that foreshadows grave times ahead. This elevates the feeling of constant tension. It's a very unsettling and creepy music score that achieves distinct synth sounds of the 80s, the kind one would hear in an 80s exploitation horror B-movie. To conclude, The Plague Dogs is a dark adventure movie with likeable rounded characters, a strong central friendship, nail-biting tension, effectively creepy music, and great voice acting. However, it doesn't embrace its animation or visuals, so its presentation sometimes lacks imagination or creativity. Sure, Snitter has some trippy hallucinations sometimes, but they're not that special or unique to watch. Actually, they're kind of underwhelming when compared to the fantasy sequence in Watership Down. There is a scene where rocks are turned into monsters, but this is only one scene in an hour and a half movie. There needed to be more consistent creativity like this throughout the film. I'm going to give it three and a half poor stars out of five. Now, if some of you are still wondering if this film is your cup of tea, then consider this. If you enjoyed such movies as Fella Day and Lassie Come Home, then you're definitely going to enjoy The Plague Dogs. I've been Jamboreeki, and I hope you've enjoyed my review. Feel free to subscribe to my channel, and I encourage you to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. You know what? After watching a depressing movie about cruelty to dogs, I think I want to watch a dog movie that seems a bit more colourful. So, in the next episode, Yunkers come here. I hope this movie is a bit more pleasant. Cheerio, folks. I don't feel no pain no more. I don't feel no pain no more. I've left this cruel world behind